Story 1 by Reddit user Vamak Admin. So this actually happened back in October of this year, near the end of the month. Due to the coronavirus making my job remote permanently and the stresses of living in Washington, D.C. right before the election, I decided to finally take the chance at my lifelong dream of moving across country to the West Coast, moving from Washington, D.C. to Washington. I know, moving across country during a pandemic and massive social unrest, it probably wasn't the best time, but I just needed a change and decided to shoot for it. Anyways, it's just me, a guy in his early 30s, and my dog, a large Alaskan Malamute, travelling across country in my SUV, pulling a U-Haul trailer behind me. For most of the trip, it's fairly boring. Nothing really of interest went on for 70% of the trip, up until I was in North Dakota, about to go into Montana via Route 94. Anyways, my route was taking me down Route 94 through North Dakota, about an hour from the Montana border, and it was about mid-afternoon and I had been driving for hours and needed to stop at a rest stop for a bathroom break and snacks for me and my dog. I pull into this random truck stop and I pull into a spot so my SUV and U-Haul trailer are taking up two spots so I can immediately pull out. I put down my SUV windows just a tad for my dog and I run into the truck stop convenience store for a few minutes. I then come back out, get in my SUV and I'm getting things set up for the drive, setting GPS, putting on seatbelt, music, etc. And during those few minutes, I put my back window down a little further so my dog can poke his head out. Now, my dog is a big dog. Again, Alaskan Malamute, and he can attract a lot of attention from people, good and bad. So it's normal for people to usually walk up and ask to pet him or take a pic, ask about his breed, etc. To the left of my SUV is two spots filled with parked cars, and to the right of me is also two parked cars with the truck on my passenger side backed in a little far in the spot, giving some space up near the front of the spot. That's important later. There is also a big 18-wheeler that just pulled in behind my two spots, making it so I couldn't back out. Suddenly, the woman pulls her SUV in front of my parking spot very close so that it would be almost impossible for me to pull out of my spot and stops her car. She is looking at me and gets out of her car. Now again, I have a large dog. People like to come up and ask questions about my dog. It's normal. But the fact that she purposely blocked the front of my car in a way that I couldn't pull out was my first moment I felt something was off. I also noticed as the woman got out of her SUV that pretty much the rest of the car seemed to be filled with trash and clothes that you could see from every window. The woman herself seemed a bit dishevelled. Her clothes and her hair were a bit astray. But again, this could just be a traveller interested in asking me about my dog. She grabs her purse from her SUV. So it was kind of like a purse your mum would have. Kind of a medium-sized purse and she wasn't holding the purse a normal way that someone would usually carry it. She had one hand that looked like it was in the purse and held it a very odd way. That also seemed off. She walked over to my driver's side window from her SUV. The entire time holding her purse in that very odd way with one hand kind of in it. So when she first blocked my car, I immediately put up all my windows. And when she walked over to my car, again still holding her bag in a very odd way to my driver's side window, I put down the window just a smidge. I have one of those little rain protectors on the top of my windows, so you could put the window down an inch and somebody couldn't reach in. So the lady steps up to my window. I nudge my window down just enough to speak, but not enough to reach through. And the first thing I notice is her eyes. Maybe I was just being a paranoid traveller, especially during everything going on in the world right now, but the look she was giving me with her eyes just seemed off. They were kind of wide open and looked like the kind of eyes you see on someone right before you're about to get into an argument or get upset, or even slightly crazy, like they were laser-focused on me while also looking to the sides from time to time. So again, she walks up. I nudge my window down just a tad and say, Hi, can I help you? As politely as I can. She says to me, I was drawn to you by your dog. Again, a normal response from most people. 
and she kept talking, but due to the window being mostly up, it being a windy day, and being at a truck stop, it was hard to hear the rest of what she had to say. Not knowing all that she'd said, I said, Thank you, I appreciate you noticing my dog. Unfortunately, we have to be heading out. Have a good day. I noticed I had just a slight bit of room due to the truck to the right of me parking far back in its spot to just slip around her SUV and then pull out around it. As I pulled out of the spot around her SUV, I took a last look at her and she had this scowl on her face as I was pulling away, again, still holding her purse in that odd way. So anyways, I leave the truck stop and get back on 94, continuing my way towards Montana. As I'm driving away, I figured she was probably just someone who wanted to say she liked my dog, probably wanted to ask what breed he was, pet him, etc. And I kind of felt bad just leaving like that, which I figured is why she gave the scowl. Anyway, I'm about five miles from the truck stop on 94, and if you've ever driven down 94, you know that both sides of the highway has two lanes, fast lane to the left, slow lane to the right. I'm on the right lane driving, and I notice behind me the silver SUV. So again, I figure maybe she's just heading my direction, and it's a long way between towns, so it's probably coincidental. But I was also noticing that most of the traffic was passing me on the left-hand side in the fast lane, yet she's stuck behind me for a few good miles. She then pulls into the fast lane and pulls up so she's riding along the tail end of my SUV, just maintaining the same speed as I am and staying right at the back of my SUV to the left. I try slowing down to let her pass, but she slows down with me. She stays exactly in that place for what felt like the longest 15 minutes of my life, and I notice that traffic is backing up behind her in the fast lane, and I start to also notice horns from some drivers behind her wanting her to move past my SUV. Finally, after 15 minutes, she pulls past me and drives off. Now all that stuff on its own seems innocent enough, but altogether, it kind of freaked me out a bit. Why would she purposefully block my SUV back at the truck stop instead of just walking over from her parking spot? Why would she be holding her bag in such a weird position with her hand in it? Why would she follow me for about 25 minutes total? The latter half was the 15 minutes she spent riding next to me. It just felt very off. And for the rest of my trip to Washington, I kept a lookout for the silver Hyundai SUV just in case. So I get to Washington see some friends, and I tell them about the encounter. And the first thing my friend says is, oh, she was probably trying to rob you. He explained that she probably noticed I was by myself, my SUV, my dog, I was younger, I had out-of-state plates, and that happens a lot that travellers and people from out-of-state can get robbed along the highways. Since we're not familiar with the area, some of us might be more trusting, etc. So anyways, I might not never know why she did what she did, and I'm glad it never escalated past the point that it did, but it also still kind of freaks me out thinking that something sinister could have happened, especially out in the middle of nowhere where it could be an hour between towns. Lady, if you just wanted to ask me about my dog, I'm sorry if I seemed rude kind of dismissing you and pulling off like that, but personally, let's not meet again. Before I continue to the next story, I just want to say thank you for choosing to watch this video, and I hope you're enjoying my narration. If you are, please go ahead and show your appreciation by liking this video, commenting on it, and if you don't already, subscribing to my channel. It really helps me out. Story 2 By Reddit user Jerry's Wife In high school, one of my best friends was a girl I'll call Susan. She lived with her mum and stepdad out in the middle of nowhere. Even though we were the same age, her parents treated her a lot differently than my parents treated me. For one thing, I was expected to go driver's training and get a license and a job. I saved enough money working at a fast food job that my parents let me buy a used car. Nothing fancy. I was expected to pay for all of the expenses for it. Susan's parents felt I was a bad influence on her because of my job and my car. Susan wasn't allowed to take driver's training or get a job. After we graduated from high school, I joined the military and lost touch with Susan. 
In the early 90s, living on my own, my parents called me at work one day and passed along a message that Susan had called and wanted to see me. I was really excited to see her. I loved her like a sister. She said she was staying with her mum and stepdad and asked if I remembered where they lived. Of course, I told her. We made arrangements for me to pick her up one night. She still didn't have a driver's license. We'd go to dinner and catch up. The night of our get-together, I drove to her childhood home. I went to the back door of a screened porch, and I couldn't help but be a little disturbed and puzzled at what I saw. Stuck to the ceiling were the covers of dozens of paperback books. The books hung down from their covers on the ceiling all over the room. On the wall facing the door of the porch was a large picture of a half-man, half-goat. It held something in its hand, but I don't remember what. There were about ten bowls with candles in them on the floor and on the tables. I was taking in all of this when I heard Susan say, Jane, come round here. We don't use that room anymore except for special purposes. I went around to the front door and she let me inside. There were three chairs set up facing the door and three people were sitting in the chairs. I recognised her mother as one of the people. Her stepfather, wearing nothing but an open bathrobe, was leaning to one side and drooling. There was another woman seated there that I didn't recognise. No one introduced me to the other woman. I smiled and said, Hi, to all of them. Susan stood off to the side of the half-circle of seated people. None of the people responded to my greeting. They just stared, unsmiling. No one said anything. They seemed to be evaluating me. I started to get frightened. I thought to myself, these people could murder me, and out here no one would hear a sound. I said to Susan, Uh, are you ready to go? She was ready, and we left without incident. We had a nice dinner and a nice visit. I asked her about the room and what it all meant, but she said she didn't want to talk about that. After dinner, I drove her home, but I didn't get out of the car. I couldn't get away fast enough. At work the next day, I was told I had a call from Susan. It was Susan's mother, looking for her. I told her I didn't know where she was. Soon after, and unrelated to this, I moved to a different apartment in a nearby town and got a different job. I never saw Susan again. She reached out to me again on some reunion website, but I never responded. I don't know if they were into devil worship or something else, but I was really frightened. For a couple of weeks after that, strange things happened. I would get phone calls where no one would say anything. I was driving along one day and a tyre flew off a car in the oncoming lane and crashed into the windshield of the car behind me. No one was injured. I really think it was all connected to the strange happenings in that house. Story 3 By Reddit user Mrs Lindy So this happened over a year ago. I, a 53-year-old female, am from the US, but now live in the UK. I thought this kind of thing only happened in Florida, where my family still lives, as I've had my fair share of creepy encounters there. I like to think I'm a tough old bird who doesn't mind helping out a fellow human being. I was driving home with my dogs from my partner's house, as we were still dating at the time, and I had work the next day and needed my work stuff. He lived an hour away, so it was a long drive home through the rustic English countryside. It was late-ish, but was still a little light as summer lingered about on those lovely long sunsets. As I'm driving, I get a call from my son, who was living in the US. Just wanted to pull over and touch base with my son, so I let him know that I was driving and would catch up with him when I got home. I pull over at the next convenient spot, which happens to be a drive onto someone's farm. I wasn't aware of this until after getting out of my car later. I had vaguely noticed a big barn next to a farmhouse, kind of unkempt and no lights on. 
It's still a little light out, so nothing overtly odd, I suppose, about no lights on inside the house behind the guy. While I'm talking to my son, both my dogs start to grumble about something, and I look up and see a very big, tall and heavy mid-sixties or seventies, older man waving at me for help. He had the bonnet of his truck propped up and was sitting on a stool next to it. Since I had a mobile phone, I thought that I would offer to call someone to help him. As soon as I stepped out of my car, he shouted at me to roll up my windows because of my dogs. My babies are about the size of a beagle, and my girl is fiercely protective. So I roll the windows only about halfway up, enough so they can still poke their heads out, but not down far enough so it's an easy jump out of the car. Some people are just scared of dogs, right? Even though, most farms have working dogs. But okay. As I get to his truck, I offer the phone call. He's so old, so maybe he doesn't have a cell phone, you know? He says no to the phone call, and just says he needs someone to help fill the radiator because my car is overeated. So me, being no stranger to a little light auto maintenance, looked over to see the radiator gap already off. He offered me a full bottle of water with which to perform this top-up. Mind you, the truck was stone cold, and as I got to the radiator, it was already full of water. Pesky alarm bells going off in my head even louder now. At this point, I said I would call the AA, car recovery service, or the police. He said no thanks again, and began to profusely thank me for helping with his truck. He stood up, poor Nelly, and asked for my address so that he could drop off some sausages because, you see, he was a butcher. My alarm bells were screaming now. All the while my dogs are not loudly barking, but you can hear them nervously woofing from my car in the background, maybe twenty feet away. Luckily, he seemed disabled since he was wearing a knee brace and also had a walking stick. I only got close enough to him once to get the water bottle hand off, stayed at arm's length after that. I made my excuses and immediately walked back to my car. I have never gotten out of anywhere so fast in my life. After recounting this story to my daughter, she said it was a good thing that the dogs were with me and that they probably saved me from getting into further trouble. I seriously thought that I might have just met Leatherface's granddad. Definitely felt like a setup. Who sits outside in the semi dark like that in the middle of nowhere, waiting for some chance help you don't really need to wander by? Super scary, creepy. Story 4 By Reddit user BabyCake818. This happened 12 years ago, when I was 16, and I'm a female. Back then, I lived in a small town where most people lived out in the country. Around 12am on a Saturday, I'm dropping off my friend after a night of hanging out. This friend lived way out in the country, and to get there, you had to take a lot of winding roads and nothing on either side, and not many people travelled on them. There were a few houses, but most of them owned a lot of land, so they were majorly spread out. I always hated dropping her off at night because driving back was always super creepy. Probably because I've seen way too many horror movies to know what can happen out in the middle of nowhere. But it was my turn to drive that night. After dropping her off, I'm being super careful, not only because of my irrational fear, but because of drunks who won't take the curves well. I turn left on the last small street before I get to the main road, and this street has two major curves that you have to take slow since they are pretty wide and almost back to back. I'm coming up on the first curve, so I'm slowing down, when I see three people dressed in all black, black sweatpants and black pants, walking and blocking the whole lane. It was frustrating at first because I thought that they were just teenagers not thinking of the dangers of what they were doing, so I speed up to hurry and pass them in the other lane before a car coming the other direction hit me. As I'm passing them, I look out my side window to get a glimpse of the idiot teenagers' faces when I noticed all three of them are wearing some creepy grey skull mask and they all stared at me as I passed them. If it was close to Halloween, I would have passed it off as someone getting in the spirit of Halloween. But it was around May that this happened. 
The weird thing about the situation was, it didn't seem like they were trying to run me off the road or cause me harm. They didn't even look behind them when I first pulled up on them. The whole situation was too weird. So, I called the police. They called me back pretty soon after and told me they sent someone to the exact location where I described and said they found nobody walking on the street or even on the side of it. What creeped me out about it is that there was nowhere the three people could have hid at because this street had open land on both sides. There was also no side streets that they could have turned on to evade the cops. They had to have been picked up by somebody or knew of a good place to hide. Either way, I know what I saw were actual people and not something I made up. I have no idea to this day what those three people were up to, but I told my friend that if she wanted me to drop her off again, it needed to be before dark because I never wanted to find out what their intentions were. Story 5 by Reddit user Jimmy Pineapple So when I was in my early 20s, I had one of the creepiest encounters of my life. I was still living at home at the time. It was near the end of my college life, so financially, it made a lot of sense. My girlfriend lived about 15 minutes away from me, so I frequently visited her and would stay late since it wasn't a long drive home. One night, I left about 2am, which wasn't abnormal. Usually, I left about that time, and I wasn't tired at all. Mind you, we lived in a very rural and mountainous area, so it was a very easy drive home. Houses were very spaced apart, and there were decent stretches of road without houses and very little lighting other than your own headlights. It was a country road with country folks, and I usually only saw one or two cars on my way home. I was familiar with the drive home, the same route I drove over a hundred times happily. The drive started out as normal, but as I was rocking out to Metallica while rounding a bend, Suddenly, I saw this figure standing on the side of the road. As I drove closer, I realised it was a woman in a white nightgown, covered in something and waving for help. I didn't see her face, but as I got closer, I could see what looked like blood all over her. I just froze with fear and kept staring at the gown covered in splatters of blood as she kept flailing her arms. She was standing across from a house with no lights on, waving like crazy for help. She had dark hair and really long and thin arms. The way she was dressed, she looked like she had escaped a hospital or something, but where she was at was so far out in the middle of nowhere. The closest hospital was miles away. I didn't stop and just drove right past her. I was so frozen with fear that I couldn't even think, and I just drifted a little further down the road. About a minute after passing her, I pulled my phone out to call 911. Then, suddenly before I could dial 911, two state troopers in SUVs drove past me heading her direction, neither with their lights on. I was so freaked out, I drove straight home and didn't take that route to my girlfriend's house for a week. My mind raced that entire night as I went through every scenario in my head. There were some thick woods across the house from where she was standing near. Maybe she had escaped a dungeon in a house and ran towards the closest road. Or maybe she was a victim of domestic violence in that house. I checked the news and googled that area each day for weeks. Never heard anything. To this day, I still have no idea what happened. It still haunts me. Story 6 By Reddit user Nightingale when I was a kid, my family and I lived in a three-bedroom house about 15 minutes by car away from the nearest city. I say city loosely as it didn't even have fast food at the time, and has a population of about 5,000 people. Nothing ever happened in this town, so much so that people weren't afraid to leave their doors unlocked at night. I think I was about 11 or 12 at the time and my brother was 8 or 9. It wasn't uncommon for my mother, who was a single parent, to go to her job as a dispatcher for the local sheriff's office and leave my brother and I home alone when we didn't have school. We were old enough to take care of ourselves and if we needed anything, we could always call our grandparents who lived close by. One day, during summer break, my brother and I were left home alone as my mother had work. I can't remember what we decided to do for the first part of the day, 
but I do remember that later in the afternoon, I want to say noon or one-ish, we decided to go outside and jump on our trampoline. We probably played outside for a good hour or two before we noticed a brown car pull off the highway that was about a mile away from our house and slowly drive up the long stretch of road towards our house. Our house was the first road that you drove past on the dirt road. And drive by us. We continued to play, but watched this car drive by probably six or seven times, still going very slow. We decided that if the car drove by again, we would get off the trampoline, go inside the house, and lock the door. We often saw cars drive up and down the road because, in the middle of nowhere, people tend to get lost. The car did in fact drive by again, but instead of continuing down the road to the highway, it pulled into our circular driveway. My brother and I scrambled off the trampoline and booked it to the house, which was only a few feet away. As the eldest sibling, I felt it was my job to protect my brother. So, with my back to the front door where my brother was peeking out from, I waited and watched as a tall blonde man, maybe in his mid to late twenties, got out of the car. I can still remember exactly what the car looked like, and it had a giant painted bird on the hood. At first glance, he didn't look like a creep. He just looked like your everyday kind of guy. Hey, do you know where X lives? He asked me and I shook my head. Are you sure you don't know? I was starting to get increasingly nervous. I just wanted the guy to leave. No, I don't know who that is, I remember telling the guy. At this point, another guy with short dark hair about the same age got out of the car and leaned on the door, smirking. The two guys looked at each other and laughed before the driver of the car closed his door and took a few steps towards me. Oh, are you afraid of us? I was terrified, but I wasn't about to tell them up front that I was. Instead, I opted to remain silent. The guy took a few more steps towards me before I practically leapt into the house, slammed the door and locked it behind me. I remember as I was closing the door, the driver was running at me at full sprint with this twisted smile on his face like this was all a giant game. My brother and I stood pressed against the door, waiting for something to happen when the driver's voice came again. He asks the same question, as if we were afraid of him, this time screaming it. I heard another laugh, just before he began beating on the door violently, occasionally shaking the doorknob. I was dumb and I didn't think to call 911 and tell my mother. I just remember being afraid. The guy continued to beat on the door for what felt like an eternity, screaming at my brother and me to open the door, that they weren't going to hurt us or asking us why we were afraid. Finally, it all stopped just as suddenly as it began. I heard from beyond the door the guy say something to his friend, the car door slammed shut, and the engine rev before everything grew uncomfortably silent. My brother and I, too afraid to stay by ourselves any longer, worrying that those guys would come back, called my grandparents, who lived five or so miles away, to come and get us. It wasn't until last year that my brother and I, now in our twenties, finally told my mum about this, who asked us why we didn't call her and tell her about any of this at the time it was happening. Honestly, I can't really say why we didn't, but I wish we did. To this day, Whenever I go back to my hometown, I still look for that ugly brown car with giant red and orange bird painted on the hood and often wonder what would have happened if we hadn't run inside or if one of them had gotten in. Thank you for watching and or listening to this video. Again, if you enjoyed it, please go ahead and hit the like button and if you don't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and select the notification bell so you don't miss out on any future uploads. Also, please leave a comment on this video letting me know what you thought of it. Comments really help with the YouTube algorithm and will really help my channel to grow. If you have a story you would like me to narrate, please email me at mrsinisterstories at gmail.com. If you want to support my channel even further, there are a number of ways you can do so. You can consider leaving me a tip for this video via my PayPal. Link is included in the description. Check out my Teespring store and consider purchasing one of my shirt designs. I have a new design with a dogman, wendigo and skinwalker and bigfoot all on a zebra crossing that is a must for anyone who loves these types of stories. Some people have been asking in the comment sections if I have done any audiobooks and the answer to that is yes. 
On Audible, there is a book, Punch, by J. R. Park, that I narrated. I do get a small royalty if you decide to purchase that. It's a revenge slasher horror novel that was a lot of fun to narrate. I'd like to do more in the future at some point. Lastly, the way you can really help me to grow is to share my content with anyone you might think is interested in it. Thanks again.